This is Dr. Ruben Chen, and welcome to the Vital Signs Podcast. We'd really like to welcome to our podcast, Dr. Ruben Chen. Um, I have just really been looking forward to this opportunity to visit with you, Dr. Chen, and, and to ask you some questions. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I, I'm very interested in all that you've been doing. In fact, it's a little bit it's a little bit exhausting to see all the things that you do, particularly when you consider that you're also raising a family of five children. So yeah, uh, when you add to, to that, there's a lot on your plate. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to have to, well, um, again, thanks for inviting me on. Um, I'm, I'm very honored to be able to uh, speak with you. And um, I'd like to probably with the family going to have to, throw that over to my wife. Uh, she does, <laughs> she does the yeoman's work there. So yeah, that's, that's definitely my wife there. Well, that's fantastic. And, and I think we all feel the same about our wonderful wives. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Dr. Chen earned his bachelor of science in neuroscience from Brigham Young University. Yep. And his doctor of medicine from the university of California, Irvine school of medicine and then completed his specialty training at the university of Minnesota in physical medicine and uh, rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. In 2013, Dr. Rupin Chen developed a breakthrough SunFit program. I want to hear a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. He has also established an anti-aging and wellness spa, Sun Living Health and Wellness, located at Sunrider International World Headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, his dream was to create the best anti-aging center in the world, combining high-quality Sunrider products with special anti-aging treatments to create a unique experience for some living clients. Um, I have to tell you, uh, Dr. Chen, as I was doing my research on you, your fit tips mm -hmm. are really good. Okay. I really like it. In fact, I want to tell everybody who's listening right now that they might want to put away their Netflix binge watching and binge watch <laughs> your fit tips. Uh, the one on soy demystified all of the myths that I, uh, uh, that I had that I had heard on soy, yeah. the one on gluten completely described what the gluten concerns are because I, I think you're mm -hmm. right in your, in your assessment. A lot of people just don't get what gluten is. And then unfortunately for your sugar and complex carbohydrates, I had to put my peanut M&Ms away. So, <laughs> you can have so, some peanut butter though. Yeah, yep. that's still good. <laughs> that's, that, that's good. So, I have some questions for you, Dr. Chen, and I, I wonder if you'd help us out. Mm -hmm. So re research shows that having a giving nature can actually be more healthy. Yeah. Now, Sunrider seems to have built that into its DNA. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Well, um, it probably originates with my parents. Um, uh -huh. You know, it, when my parents started Sunrider, uh, they a lot of people actually helped them out. And um, I think that kind of gratitude and uh, desire to help other people came out. Um, so, so, you know, my parents, my dad especially, he grew up in uh, Taiwan in a post-World War II Taiwan. So it was probably a couple of years after uh, World War II and, and it decimated Taiwan. So my dad would often talk about how um, he had a family also, I had five, uh, there were five kids and his parents and grandparents all lived in like a single room apartment. And, uh, he would talk about how he would grow up, go out and try to hunt for crickets and, and rats to eat because that's, that's literally all they had. And that's also when he got, uh, interested in Chinese medicine because of his grandfather, uh, because they just were malnourished and um, a lot. And so he relied on his grandfather's knowledge of uh, herbal medicine and to help give him strength and get over some of his illnesses. I, I think f coming from that kind of a background where you really have nothing to having so much, uh, thanks to obviously being uh, in the United States and the kind of blessings that we have when we're here, um, it just builds a lot of gratitude. So, uh, giving to other people, especially people who are down on their luck or people who are in impoverished situations, it's, it's very important to us. 
So whenever I watch anything about Sunrider International, there's a lot of high energy and a lot of enthusiasm. And, yeah. and again, I go back to that giving nature. It's just something that appears to be, um, it, obviously your parents have done a magnificent job in transferring that giving nature, not only to their children, but to everybody else who's associated with the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, it's pretty much in our DNA uh, from the starting of Sunrider to now uh, to be able to um, support other people. I mean, even in the, I know it's a weird plug, but um, the creation of something like a network marketing business, um, to be able to uh, create good products, but then to be able to create your own home business. Uh, I think my dad definitely had a big vision that people from any walk of life could be able to earn money and to be able to help others as well. So that's one of the things that uh, I think is foundation for us here. Well, I don't think that's a weird plug at all. I, just, <laughs> okay. I think that's, uh, I think that's uh, absolutely at the heart and core of everything that I can see right now uh, related to uh, Sunrider. And that takes me to my next question, actually. Uh, simply the best mm. is what you are all about. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be a driving feature in the product development. Uh, my sense is, is this is a philosophy to life as well mm -hmm. uh, for, for all of you. How, yeah. how does that simply the best philosophy translate into your daily life, do you think? Uh, it it has a lot to do with pretty much everything that I do. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I have grown up in an amazing home. Um, I have uh, good parents. I've got great siblings. Um, but um, my parents still instilled in us a desire to be the best that we could be. And um, a good example is one of the reasons why I became a medical doctor. Um, you know, going through the training of medicine is extremely arduous. And one of the reasons why I think I wanted to be a medical doctor was, you know, I wanted to have something that I could call my own. Um, I had to, you know, medical, I, uh, if people don't know, medical training uh, beyond university for me uh, was an additional seven years past college. Wow. And yeah, so it's nuts. If you include college on that, it's, it's like 13 years. So basically after you graduate from high school, it's like starting kindergarten all the way through high school again. So I should tell my son to quit whining. Right now. <laughs> school, so <laughs> yeah, so it, but it, um, because of that, the, you know, the hours are long. Um, it's painful. You have to deal with extreme, uh, circumstances, but, um, I think, I think as a person, it's important to be able to face challenges and to be able to overcome them. Uh, if you don't do that, then you won't be able to have any sense of accomplishment in yourself. I think that kind of uh, ethos is very strong in my family. My, my siblings are all accomplished as well. Both of my sisters are uh, lawyers um, and I have a younger brother who uh, completed a graduate degree from UCLA and another uh, brother who has a master's degree in information systems from BYU. So um, I think it's, it's just one of those things that's always been there since I was young. Yeah. Well, it's impressive and it's actually quite inspiring. Um, the, my next question has to do with mentors. Mm -hmm. um, at Mentors International, the key to our success are the various, well, we have over 200 mentors internationally who work side by side with people and help them achieve levels of, of uh, self-reliance that are quite impressive. Yeah. Um, it sounds to me like your mother and father have been significant mentors in your life. Mm -hmm. um, but the question I have for you is, if you could identify one or two mentors that have come at vital moments in your life, um, what would you say to that? And how would you say it was a, it was a difference for you uh, in relation to your development? Um, yeah, so there's a couple that come to my mind immediately. So um, when I was in high school, um, 
in our church, uh, we have uh, somebody who's uh, a higher leader called a stake president. And I don't know why um, he seemed to like me. <laughs> and he spent a lot of time with me for some reason. And um, uh, I, uh, I remember I was, um, it, it was about time for me to figure out what I wanted to do after I uh, went to college and beyond. And he um, advised um, through a lot of uh, great, great discussion to do missionary work for my church. Um, I don't, you know, my, my parents are both, uh, converts, uh, to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so I don't, my parents had not done any missionary work. They, they actually didn't really even talk about it very much. And so it was, I think, um, a surprise to them that I decided to do missionary work and to go to another country. I went to Taiwan for two years. And, um, I think that experience changed my perspective a lot and uh i definitely uh owe that a lot to my state president the um the other person was actually somebody who um was very unlikely so when i was in medical school i had initially thought of becoming a family medicine doctor and um i would just sort of i feel like middling through everything and I, and I went to do a rotation family medicine and the uh my professor there she she was rough on me made me actually rethink a lot of things she just said you know I don't think you're very smart <laughs> and it was it was shocking <laughs> and she's like yeah I don't think family medicine is for you I don't think you could get this stuff but uh, and she was she was extremely harsh but she also, uh, you know, I was with her, her every day for a couple months and she would sit down every day with me and just talk through why I was getting things wrong. I, maybe at that time I thought I was doing okay. Um, but she, I, I had not had anybody literally tell me and criticize me in, I think, I feel like it was a loving way, um, how to be better. So she sat down with me every single day talked with me about how I was speaking, how my mind, I mean, all of these things that I had had problems with, she literally got me through that. And I feel like I became a better medical doctor uh, because of her. So, uh, but I remember at the time, I, oh my gosh, I despised that woman, but she definitely, <laughs> her time, I, she didn't need to spend that time. She probably could have insulted me like other uh, doctors do just been on her way, but she spent the time and sat down with me and, and sort of hammered in what it, what it is to think like a medical doctor and to treat other people in the right way. So, yeah. Yeah. I think we've all had mentors from time to time who we love to hate, hated to love. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I can, I could probably identify a few of those. I, I was probably in need of the, of the, of the, uh, of the push, uh, as much as anybody. So I'm grateful for mentors who have pushed me in the past as well. Mm -hmm. and so, so how do you go from somebody who doesn't really understand this and her, in her uh, assessment to uh, an individual who's really been quite ambitious when you consider uh, all of the things that you're striving to do with your wellness spa, with Sunrider products, mm -hmm. uh, with your, with your own podcast, vital signs, Mm -hmm. And uh, then your, your, your medical practice. I mean, you've taken, I, I think if that teacher, that mentor could look at you now, she'd probably shake her head and say, <laughs> what happened to you? So. I, I hope so. Um, I, I think um, one of the things that I learned at, about from medicine is, um, and I think this is important, is uh, how to communicate properly. Um, how to share your knowledge with other people. Uh, that was probably one of the hurdles that I had that this uh, mentor helped me with. Um, you know, studying wasn't the issue, is how I relayed that information to other people. And so um, because of that, I think that's actually fed a lot into the kind of things that I do. I, I am 
very much attracted to new ways of thinking. And I love to share new insights with other people. So um, I think communication is very important. Uh, I think that's probably the foundation of the kind of medicine that I practice as a medical doctor. Is I, I like being a medical doctor because um, you know business is is great. I like being a businessman, um, but a medical doctor you get to talk with regular people, um, everyday people about their issues and struggles and try to relate to them one on one. And uh, I like that a lot. Um, in business, um, a big part of business is being able to relay um, messages to whoever audience you're speaking to. And that's also something I think is, is a lot of fun and very challenging, but also very interesting as well. So I think, yeah, communication, being able to relay maybe complex thoughts, simplifying them to, to the lay person. Um, that's something that is very fascinating to me. So let me ask you a question about that, because how do you take an average person, because you have a diverse um, approach to medicine, mm -hmm. um, the traditional um, medical approach, mm -hmm. acupuncture, mm -hmm. uh, herbal remedies, uh, and, others, and other uh, remedies as such, how do you get, how does the average person figure out the best way to weigh all of those things out? That's, that's a good question. <clears throat> I probably have to qualify that. It, I mean, like, like anything it is, um, part of it is reliant on, uh, the knowledge that they already have. And part of it is re relies on the knowledge of the person, excuse me, <clears throat> that is, um, relaying that information. So, I'm, I'm pretty upfront with my patients that I don't know everything. I will relay with to them the best things that I have in my knowledge. Um, what I think is most important is um, <clears throat> when I talk with somebody is to give them choices and um, the pros and cons of every choice. I want to get a little bit back to Sunrider. One of the things that I've learn and is making the world a brighter the world a brighter place mm -hmm. um in addition to that there's this uh this good neighbor uh, mindset that you have been able to infuse in the people how, ma how many people are associated with uh sunrider right now approximately uh around the world yeah um tens of thousands yeah i know oh. that's yeah tens of thousands so yeah that's fantastic so this this good neighbor policy and the 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 giving nature and the making the world a brighter place mm -hmm. how do you send that message out how is it that you try to communicate that to all of the people that are associated because that's an ambitious uh, uh endeavor with so many people connected. yeah i i think a lot of it has to deal with uh number one uh, the kind of products that we have our products are um they actually help people a lot. Um, people who, um, so our products are concentrated um, herbal health foods. And um, the way we approach um, developing our products is we wanna have products that are effective. So if it is a product for energy, it really does give you energy. Uh, it's not just caffeine and sugar or if it, or if it is to help you with your skin it really does help you with your skin so we have effective products that makes people want to help other people um, i do think that our um, network marketing by its nature i know gets a lot of bad rap but people who are in it um, they know that you can really help somebody out of a rough situation. I think especially right now, people are at home, you know, network marketing, uh, multi-level marketing, that is really a lifesaver for a lot of people mm -hmm. to be able to um, have a business from your home and to be able to make money um, selling products and sharing good things with people. I also think it's a lot of it is by example. Um, if my parents weren't giving people and really uh, altruistic minded people, I don't think that that would translate uh, across very well. I, I know that we, we often get a, a lot of our uh, people in our company often tell us 
that we're really accessible. Um, we're probably the most accessible uh, owners of a large company. I, I talk with in our individual uh, independent business owners all the time. And I think that's, um, that's, that is something that people can feel. So we care about people. It starts from the top down. So your parents have been um, exemplifying that for years, obviously, yeah. and long enough to be able to show there's a genuine, sincere element of, of giving and, and uh, altruism, as you said, yeah. so that it's been able to translate down. Um, I was impressed at how you wrote and how I think your sisters wrote that when it came to the work ethic mm -hmm. in your family, that, that figures in prominently in, into everything that you do as well. Yeah. Uh, my parents are, <laughs> they, since I was young, they are against slackers. They are just not a slacker minded family. They, they would, um, uh, you know, it, very typical of high performance, parents but they they demand uh the kids they have what one of the things that my parents really wanted um for us is that if sunrider wasn't there for us that we could have a very successful career even without it uh, so they demanded that we have our own careers to be able to support ourselves uh to show that that you know we're hardworking and um we had that mindset as well so yeah it's definitely instilled in us since we were children wow mm -hmm. it's it's an impressive organization and i applaud you uh for you. everything that you've done and everything that you're doing uh in and around the world um with uh with everything we are at, at mentors international just deeply appreciative mm -hmm. of everything that you do we, we work with a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I remember now what it was that I wanted to ask you. We work with a lot of people who are going through significant low points in their life. Mm -hmm. If you could give some advice, you're familiar, your parents have probably told you the stories. You've probably been familiar with a lot of people mm -hmm. throughout your association who've had their highs and had their lows, particularly now in light of the things that we're struggling with in the world as a whole. Mm -hmm. If you could give some advice to some of those people that are at their lowest point, what, what would you say? That's a good question. Uh, I actually was just talking with somebody about this the other day. Um, you know, it, when I was, um, there was a point in my um, medical training where I just was thinking, man, this is never going to end. I was working, uh, 100 hour weeks. Uh, I was probably I was so sleep deprived, I think one year that I think I forgot half of the year. <laughs> it was, it was amazing. I would end up in places I wouldn't even know how I got there. And um, I remember feeling like this was not going to end. And I, um, my mom is a medical doctor, and I talked with her about it. And uh, she said, you know, that, um, we, everybody has their overarching goal. They want to achieve uh, a certain amount of success. Um, but when you hit your low point, really all you can do is take it day by day. Um, if you are thinking, oh my gosh, this I have to do so much this week or I'm not going to sleep at all for the next like four days, you know, that can be rough. Uh, and when you're thinking about that, too much that can really draw you down. But if you think, you know, I just, I just need to get through this shift. Um, I need to just get through this day. Maybe I just need to get through the next couple of hours. And then once those couple of hours are done, I just going to get through the next, the next couple of hours. That's, that was the best advice to break it down into pieces for me. Um, I remember when I started to do that, then before I knew it, I was, I was actually done with my medical training. And I remember thinking, how did this happen? Yeah. I, my wife hated it too, though. She, she's, she would be so upset because she would want to plan like vacations or something. And I said, no, I, I can't plan. I just, I'm thinking about what am I doing this week? I just can only think about it one week at a time. Um, and she would love to plan. I just am very bad at it uh, because I was just focusing on today. Uh, but when we were done, we were done. 
and and I was so happy when I had completed it. But almost it went by so quickly. It was so odd. Um, when you just look at it day by day, the days then they go by a lot faster than you think. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I, I want to thank you for taking some time to be with us today. Um, yeah. Um, I, 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 it, this may sound like a weird plug, as you said, okay? I, I want to tell everybody who's listening, get online and look at uh, uh, Dr. Chen's uh, uh, podcast, Vital Signs. I also recommend uh, Fit Tips. I, as I said at the very <laughs> beginning, I really like those. And I'm not done binge watching them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch. Actually, I pulled my wife in when I was watching the one on soy because we had actually been asking that question. Soy milk, you know, uh, uh, almond milk, and all of those different types of things. But yeah. in addition to that, one of the things that I just really uh, want to uh, say from the bottom of our hearts at Mentors International, we could never thank you enough for your commitment to us and for helping us, um, uh, Sunrider, and the people at Sunrider are very, very genuine in their desire to yeah. provide the very best, simply the best. Uh, and that, that comes to their outreach and to their uh, desires to look outside and see what people uh, with less are in need of. And so, Dr. Chen, I applaud you. I Thank applaud you. The, the great uh, treasure you have in your family. Mm -hmm. And I applaud all of the great work that you guys are doing now and will obviously do in the years to come. So thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.